الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين أهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم يا متشهدر لنا بهذا المحضر والتعتفي بنذرة تعتي لنا بالزفر أما بعد المدر أخر حضرتي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله الحمد لله We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to gather with each other uh, in his name and visiting each other for his sake and sitting with each other for his sake Mm-hmm. And alhamdulillah, always I like to mention the hadith of, the, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadith of Qudsi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَجَالِسِينَ فِيَّ لِلْمُتَزَّاوِرِينَ فِيَّ لِلْمُتَبَادِرِينَ فِيَّ لِلْمُتَحَابِينَ فِيَّ وَلِلْمُتَزَّاوِرِينَ فِيَّ He says that my love is obligated upon those who gather for my sake, who sit together for my sake, who visit each other for my sake, who love and give gifts to one another for my sake. So alhamdulillah, we, we came from London, we traveled from America to visit you, and we're traveling within London to visit our brother for the sake of Allah, Sidi Abu Mahmoud, Abu Yasin. May Allah continue to elevate him and bless him and his family. Amen. Amen. And visiting our brother <coughs> Musa, Sayyid Musa Ba. Mm-hmm. And his family as well. Amen. And alhamdulillah, we were greeted well here and received well. And um, we are uh, thanking Allah wa kafa bihim in ni'mah. And that is enough to thank Allah. Mm-hmm. Also, we are into gathering together. Today is the 9th of Muharram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this month is the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi wa sallam. he mentions that to fast other than in the month of Ramadan, is the best the best month to fast the month of Allah وهذا يوم الشهر محرم which is the first month of the Islamic calendar year and in this month anything that you do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you and reward you for it especially fasting fasting on the day the 9th the 10th and the 11th as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he fasted on the 10th and the 11th and he said if he was to live another year I would have fasted on the 9th as well hmm. And that is one of the reasons why some of the ulama say that you should fast on the 9th because the Prophet Sallallahu when he gave the statement, he said that we should differ from the Jews. Mm-hmm. And we know Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and the people of Bani Israel were saved on this day as well. Mm-hmm. The day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa to hit his staff and Allah split the ocean in half and let the people go through it was on the day of Ashura. When the Prophet Sallallahu found the... Jews fasting on this day, and he asked them why did they fast on this day? They said it's because this is the day in which Musa salam, and Bani Israel were saved. And he says that we have more rights to Musa than you. Okay. So we fasted on that day. And he said he wanted to fast either on the 9th and 10th or the 10th and 11th to differ from the Jews. So Alhamdulillah, if you are generous on your, with your family, the Prophet salam, said, if you are generous with, on your, with your family on this day, Allah will be generous with you for the whole year. Mm. If you fast on this day, Allah will forgive your previous years of sin, or major mm. sins, or you know, well, sins that you know that we are, as we know, are in, not infallible of sin. So Allah will also forgive you for your sin. So just a brief reminder: tomorrow, inshallah, is the tenth of Muharram. Mm. Those of you that can fast, it is highly recommended to fast and do extra ibadah, give good advice, give good uh, 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 charity on this day as well, as much as you can, even if it's just a loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. And my advice to you, but also to myself as well, is to remember the ayat in the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعَدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يَا أَيُّوَ الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا تَقُوا اللَّهَ وَبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ وَسِيلَ Allah says in the Quran, O you who believe in Allah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and seek means of access to Allah. Seek means of nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you go into the tafsir of the Quran, Ibn Kathir and, and Imam Tabrani, rahimahumullah, and also Imam um, Jalalain, tafsir of Jalalain, you can find that they talk about the three different wasail. The first one and the highest one is what? The Quran itself. The Quran itself. And for the Quran to be your means of nearness to Allah, you have to understand the Quran in and out. You have to know why this ayat was revealed. You have to understand every single harf. And they said not even every single harf or letter, but every single nukta. Why? Allah made this with a fat with, with, with one nukta. Why does it have one dot? Why does it have two dots? Every single thing in it, you have to understand it. And they talked about how nothing in the Quran is hidden. Nothing in the Quran cannot be understood. Meaning, cannot be... Uh, uh, Allah didn't mean, mean for you to understand it. And Shaykh Ibrahim, he said, when, Shakib, when, when they say Alif Lam Mim, what do they say? Allahu A'lam bi muradihi. Allah knows what it means. But he said, no. Say, you don't know what it means. Because when Allah said to the Prophet, Alif Lam Mim, he said, Araftu, I know. Kaf Ha Ye Ain Sad, he said, Araftu, he said, I know. Ha Mim Ain Sin Kaf, he said, I know. Ya Sin, he said, I know. And all of these things. All of these letters, they call them huruf al-muqatta'a. These things, Allah put it in the Qur'an for you to know. And if Allah didn't want you to know, he would not put it in the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. mm. So for us to have the Qur'an as our guidance, we have to what? Fully understand what Allah is saying in the Qur'an. And that is very rare today. Mm. So they said the next thing is to have what? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as your guide. Which is also something very scarce today because of what? The amount of sin that is being committed. Not like the back olden days where people were seeing the Prophet 24 times a day, 100 times a day. And the Prophet is giving them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, direct instruction, direct advice, direct uh, 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 um, things to do, litanies. Nowadays, what can you do? Is to pray or send salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and hoping that that salawat can be a means of guiding to opening the door of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before you can even get nearness to Allah, you can't even go to Allah unless you go through the door of Rasulullah Nobody can get to him unless they go through what? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the only love Allah has. Mm -hmm. Allah has no other love than Rasulullah. No other love. And that is why he put Muhammad وسلم, next to his name. Mm -hmm. It is why he forgave Adam and readmitted him into paradise. Mm -hmm. When Adam asked him to forgive him for 70,000 years, mm -hmm. Allah didn't forgive him. Mm. But when he asked, Oh, Ya Allah. Can you forgive me by the name of Muhammad? Allah said, how do you know this name when he hasn't even come yet? Mm. He said, when I used to dwell in paradise, I used to see on the throne surrounding it, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. And I know that, it is, that this name is someone so great because you would never put anything next to your name unless that is something that you truly love. Mm -hmm. And he said, you have told the truth and I have given you permission and forgiven you and it re-entered you back in to Udquluha Bissalamun Aminin enter into Jannah in peace and protected. So if you cannot have what Rasulullah as your guide, your direct guide, guiding you to to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say what is the most common thing for us in this day and age is to have a murshid, a sheikh. A sheikh for someone who can guide you. To somewhat to, to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to show you the ropes to show you the road it's like for example anything you do in this day and age you need a teacher when you need to go to the you, when you when you have an ailment you have to go to a doctor 
for them to prescribe you a certain prescription so that you can take it and it will what? Help you in your situation. Or go to someone with the knowledge of what is bothering you so that they can give you the right treatment. If you want to go to a particular place now, we use what do we, what, what is our sheikh to guide us to, to come here? What was our sheikh today? Uh, Sat nav, right? Mm -hmm. We call it the GPS. Uh -huh. That was that's your sheikh or your guide, your murshid to get you from one destination to another. another destination with what ease, so you're not going around in circles trying to find your way. This is the reality of a sheikh, because everything you ha that you have or you need to know is already within you. The sheikh's job is to just open you up and to point to it and make you realize. That Allah has already put everything in you, and this is the way, the method, the, and the procedure to attaining this level. And, and this goes with the ayah, the validity of having a sheikh. First of all, we know what? The Prophet Muhammad sallam, had a sheikh. His sheikh was Jibreel. Alayhi salam. As he says, Man allamaka harfan wahida, fa huwa mawlak. Whoever teaches you one word, he is your master or he is your sheikh. What was the first word taught to him by Jibreel? Ikra. Ikra. Read. And after we know the history, when Khadija, our mother Khadija, radiallahu anha, when she told him, when you go to Rasul, when you go back, ask him, what am I to read? Mm. Mm. What am I to read? And this is why we all need to pray. May Allah bless us all with good wives. Amen. Because a good wife can tell you and help you in certain situations. Amen. You brother, all, everybody here has good wives. So don't show yes, no, no smiling. That's it. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah. When he said, What am I going to read? He said, Read and he taught him the word. Taught him. This, the word what to recite. So the Sheikh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also advised our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallam alayhi wa to be with him. What did he say in the Quran? What's bin nafsaka? Ma'alladina yuriduna wachahu. Humbly place yourselves, speaking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and put yourself in the presence of those who mention Allah day and night, seeking only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face. Mm -hmm. And do not turn your face away from them mm -hmm. out of disgust because you want what? The hayat of this dunya, the life, the, you want this dunya. Mm -hmm. And just to go a little bit off topic, that was the realities of the Sufis. Mm -hmm. Because we know how the description or the depiction of the Ahlul Sufa were. They weren't adorning themselves with fashion. People were ridiculing them. You know, so Allah told Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to place himself, humbly place himself with those. Mm -hmm. That they are calling Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala day and evening. Mm. Doing solely for the sake of Allah's pleasure. وَلَا تَعْدُ anhum. To read dunya or zinat al hayat dunya, looking for the beauties of this dunya. Wala tu ati man akfal na kalbuhu an zikrina. And Allah said also, do not follow those whom I have hardened their hearts from our remembrance. Auzu billahi min zalik. Allah talking to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do not follow those whom I have blocked their hearts from remembering us, remembering mm. me. So, this is why we all need to follow someone to help us, guide us to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah is telling us to seek nearness to Him. And this is what is me from Allah. Shaykh Ibrahim said, none of us could have reached Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without Him giving us is me. Without him giving us permission. When he said, what's, when, he, when he said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu. When he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu. In Arabic grammar, when, you, when they say, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu. They know what that, something is to come after that. Mm -hmm. There's something awaiting from that. Now, you got the attention of the, the listeners. Ya Muhammad. 
when someone calls Ya Ahmed, you're expecting him to what? Sure. Tell you something. I'm not just saying Ya Ahmed for the pleasure of it. I'm not saying Sayyidi Rakeen, Ya Muqaddam. I'm not saying that for no reason. Sayyidi Muhammad. There's something after that. In Senegal, they say, Kulawo, Bulawahu Jahla. If someone calls you, if they don't give you something, they will tell you something. So Shaykh Ibrahim said, when they say, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, the believers turn to Allah and say, Yes, labayka ya Rabb. We are here, Allah. Ittaqullah, fear Allah. It is a fi'lu amr. It is an order from Allah to fear Him. And then he says, after that, وَبْتَغُوا إِلَّهِ wasila." And seek means of nearness. So Ibrahim said, that right there is the permission from Allah. He opened the door for us to come to him. Oh. So we have to have someone who helps us on this path. And the end of the ayat, also this is the end of the quote, I'm going to also cut it here. After he says, Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu taqullaha wabtahu ilayhi wasila. Then he says, once you get to that level, you get to have the wasila now. It is the Quran. Allah can still give it to you. That is the, per, the bounties of Allah. Allah can do whatever He pleases. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that it's impossible for the Quran to be your guidance alone. We're not saying that it's impossible for Rasulullah sallallahu to, but it's very hard today to find that. Mm -hmm. So the more easiest way for us today, for the common people like myself, who are full of sin, is to have a sheikh who helps you eradicate these things, these bad tra traits of yourself, and to uplift you. As the Prophet ﷺ said, humans have the ability to be better than angels and to even be lower than animals. Mm -hmm. And they said, how, does this, how is this possible, Ya Rasulullah? He said, because the angel has no other choice but to worship Allah. Mm. When Allah created angels, they have no choice but to worship Allah. And the animals also, they have no choice but to worship Allah. Because if the animals don't eat, they die. And that is their form of worship. They have to bow their head to eat. Hmm. If they don't bow their head to eat, and even if they don't, uh, those who can pick up food and put it in their mouth, that is their form of ibadah. If they don't do that, they will die. And they have, they don't have any type of moral. They are what we call it barbaric so per se but if you choose to follow Allah if a human being chooses to follow Allah we have the choice you know for instance you have mm -hmm. a, you know the choice to follow Allah or disobey right mm -hmm. as the prophet said in the Quran lakum dinukum waliya deen so if we have the choice to worship Allah and we choose to worship Allah the Prophet Sallallahu said, this is when we become better than the angels, or higher than the angels. Mm. And Sheikh Hassan used to mention, and he mentioned this hadith, he said, the lowest things one can give to Allah is to use his limbs to disobey Allah. Mm. That's the lowest things you can give Allah. Mm. To use your limbs to disobey Allah. And that is becoming lower than the animals. So, to have a sheikh, it is imperative. To have someone to guide you to the, to the, to the path of Allah, it is more easier today for us to, do, to, to, to obtain it. Once you have this and you get on this path, the ayat ends off by saying, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي سَبِيلِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And strive and be steadfast on this path so that you can be amongst those who are blessed in the next life or prosperous in the next life. So you're not just reaching Allah by himself, and that's not the end goal. It's reaching Allah and staying on the path, striving, because the Shah Hassan said, getting close to Allah is like a pyramid. He said, you look at the pyramid, it's a lot of people mm. down there. Mm. A lot of people, and I'm sure you understand the pyramid. Mm. The higher you go, the less people you'll find mm. up there. Mm. And the higher you go, the higher your test will be with shaitan. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want the little, the little, he, he doesn't want the little, you, the, the, the little people. He won't even deal with you. He has his minions to deal with you. But the higher you go to Allah, the higher your tests with Allah will be. 
And that is why Sheikh Hassan said many people can't get to that pinnacle. Mm. They can't get to that tip because the test is so harsh and they fall back down. So when you have the Sheikh guiding you, helping you with what you, what, the, the, showing you the routes, you're not going to fall in certain pots and holes because it's like a chauffeur. He knows the quickest way to get somewhere. Mm. He knows, for example, if you go down that way on this time, it's traffic. You're going to be packed jammed in that traffic. So let me take the back routes and go this way and I'll get you to your destination faster. This is the reality of the sheikh. So he says, do After you have received your sheikh and you receive your guidance, now you have to be steadfast and strive on this path. Because it's, gonna, it's, it's not going to get any easier for you. It's just going to get harder and harder and harder. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in the Quran, Do you say that you will believe or do you say that you believe and think that we will not test you? As we have tested those that came before you. Mm-hmm. So you say you believe, know that you will be tested. So in closing... My advice to you as well as myself is to always try your best to seek means to come closer to Allah. Find a sheikh who can teach you. Find a sheikh who can guide you spiritually. As Sheikh Ibrahim, when they asked him, what is the sheikh or the qualities of a sheikh? He said, he is someone who is an imam, someone who is righteous, someone who is knowledgeable on the path how to help you in this journey, someone who is just, someone who can help you and lift you from these different hawal, different stations and different levels. Because you have people saying they can do these things and then you get to a level, they don't know how to help you. Mm-hmm. So, and in closing, as I mentioned, try your best to seek out the means of nearness to Allah, whether it is through Quran, whether it is through Salah, whether it is through your Sheikh giving you advice and guidance, whether it's through you making zikr, as Allah mentioned in the Salat, تَنْهِ عَنِ الْفَخْشَاءِ وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ akbar. He said that surely Salah protects you from reprehensible deeds and to make zikr, to mention Allah is even greater. So, if you're making zikr as we are doing in a few, we're going to be doing zikr, mentioning Allah as Allah ordered us to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Uzkuru Allah zikran kathiran. Mention Allah in abundant form of remembrance. So making zikr is not something that, you know, is, I would say, superrogatory. It's obligatory to mention Allah. So alhamdulillah, my brothers and sisters, thank you for uh, uh, and listening to this advice, as I mentioned, it is to myself as well. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to come together. And again, we pray for Brother Mahmoud Amen. and his family Amen. for hosting us and Amen. inviting us into their home in Amen. these uncertain times. Thank you. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Amen. to continue to raise him, Amen. continue to increase him Amen. and his beautiful children, mashallah, read a beautiful qasida today Amen. that really impressed me and made me think I need to step my game up with my aside <laughs> uh, but uh, alhamdulillah may Allah make them amongst the salihin makes them amongst the mu'mineen makes them amongst the ulama al deen and may they be a beacon of light wherever they may be and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to give you good health Amen. and Amen. your wife as well Amen. alhamdulillah wa ma'adhalik Allah habi aziz we read fatiha salatu so fatiha and we close out Hello, Hello. Hello.